Hello, I'm David Michaels. I'm the Public Services Librarian for the Schuler School of Law at Dalhousie University. I'd like to take a few minutes just to introduce one project that our staff have been working on, and that's developing an electronic casebook. We began looking at this project for a number of reasons. One, uh, the c increasing cost of casebooks. As uh, some of the casebooks have grown in size, so has the cost of producing these casebooks, and it's becoming expensive for our students in a time when we're looking to, to make education more, uh, more accessible. Another issue that we've looked at is the, uh, some of the concerns around changes to copyright and uh, what that framework is going to look like. Uh, as we look forward, uh, certainly uh, in whatever format it takes, there's likely going to be additional costs added on to producing uh, these uh, casebook documents. And the third area that we've been concerned with is uh, issues around sustainability and the environment. Uh, we produce a lot of paper at the law school and we need to find ways to, to still provide content to our students and support our teaching, but in a way that's more sustainable. So this is one of the projects we've taken on. What we have done is we've taken one casebook. Uh, this is our Aboriginal law casebook. And we've looked at the table of contents to try to determine what kind of material is available uh, in digital format that we could provide to our students. So what we have done here is we've created a PDF document of the casebook table of contents, at least a portion of it for this demo. And we've provided a links to it. So what you've seen here is that we have provided that uh, page in our uh, course management software. We use Blackboard Learning Systems and we've made this available to our faculty. So I'm just going to open up our uh, electronic casebook. So what you see here is our table of contents. And we, as we looked at the material that's available in the table of contents, we first noticed that there was a lot of material that's available through uh, websites. And we chose this particular casebook because uh, we thought it was a good example of uh, the diversity of materials that faculty could include in a casebook. So one of the first things we noticed here is uh, we noticed some of the material that's available online through government websites like legislation. And so we provided direct links to some of that material available uh, in the casebook. We looked and saw that there were uh, chapters, book chapters. This is something that we're still exploring. Obviously, we can't uh, provide digital links to the material if it's not available in digital format. There are a number of solutions we'd like to explore with this. Uh, one of the possibilities for things like book chapters that are not available digitally is that we could uh, create a more condensed version of, of a, a case book only providing the material that is available in uh, print format only. We'd also like to explore uh, other options uh, through the authors and publishers so we can take a look at ways that we can provide it within our password protected course materials uh, folders uh, that might be cost effective. And certainly we're looking forward down to the road where uh, there are digital versions of uh, many of the major textbooks. And so we're keeping those options in mind. Until then, we still have the option, as we've used for many years, of providing material on uh, reserve in our, uh, our school's library. So let's take a look at, I'm going to take a look at this particular case here. We have available through Canley. And you can see we've opened up the, uh, the Canley uh, page, and we can find this case full text. Back to our, uh, our document. One thing that we began to explore with, uh, with some of this material is the ways, and you can see here with the uh, sections, we've been able to, to uh, deep link into some of these databases and be able to go right down to document level. And so that's uh, been a particular advantage. So we can provide, for instance, the section numbers, and we can provide a number of section numbers if the faculty member wants uh, students only to look at particular sections of, of more lengthy pieces of legislation. This works for some material. Other material, it doesn't work as well because there's not persistent links that we can link to that will stay uh, for long periods of time. So what we've had to do is explore other ways of, uh, of accessing that material. And so I'm going to take a look at uh, uh, Quick Law. I'm going to open this link. And what you'll see when we go to Quick Law is it brings me to the login page. So I'm just going to log in here into this uh, collection. 
and then it will continue on to the document. Now what we've done, rather than put in a persistent link to this document on the database, is we've put in the search string as our link. So what it's doing is going and executing a search, when I click on that link, in the Lexis Quick Law database, and it brings back this case. At this point, we have, uh, have not been able to, to deep link to specific sections, but we think we can do this, and we're going to fine-tune a little bit more so we can actually uh, provide faculty members and students with specific uh, pinpoint citations. We have a lot of material available through our electronic journals collection. And so this is a, a, a wonderful opportunity. These are materials that we have already paid for through the library to have subscriptions to, and we can provide our students digitally. What we were noticing, of course, when uh, we looked at some of the casebook is that we had a lot of material that we have already paid a subscription for that we were now printing off from the digital format and providing in a casebook and then selling it to our students and paying copyright fees. So in essence we were paying a couple of times for the same pieces of information. And you can see here I have uh, uh, access to this article and uh, it's available in PDF format for our students. One interesting um, uh, discovered we made as we, we showed uh, this mock-up to some of our students, one student said, this is very helpful because now I see where the material is coming from. I can see the database that you're using, I can see the website where you found that document, and I can go and explore further beyond that uh, other material. I thought, now this is a wonderful example of, uh, of good legal information literacy because they're understanding how this uh, material is uh, accessed and they're just discovering new databases that they can explore for their own research. So you can see, of course, we have uh, different databases that we've provided and we've, uh, we've kind of uh, highlighted in different colors so you can see some of the differences. One of the things we were able to do with some of the new features in some of the databases is point in time. So we are able to, in this case, provide a point in time link uh, to a particular section that has prior to an amendment and we can use that. Uh, and as more databases start putting point-in-time uh, um, versions online, this will become easier and easier to, uh, to link to and demonstrate to our students. And of course you can see materials, we have bills, we have uh, government reports, and we've had a, a wide diversity of material. As you look at this list, really what we have here is a single PDF page. None of these documents reside on our server. We are providing a single page. Now, we may have the option to be able to do that if we have faculty members who have provided a particular content that they have the copyright to or a document that we can obtain the copyright uh, permissions for, we could post that on in our um, our, our coursework management software space and we can put a link from this document to that document that's on our server. And so that's an option that we have as well. Thank you for taking the time to look at our, uh, our project. This is ongoing and we hope to develop it further as we draw on our digital resources in a way that is cost-effective, a way that is sustainable, and, and we think quite manageable. It will take time to make sure that the links do not change from time to time that happens. But realistically, we feel that the time to develop a casebook like this and to make sure that the links are current is not dissimilar to the amount of time that we would spend developing a print casebook and uh, annually uh, noting up cases and, uh, and checking the availability of materials that we have here. So we think it is um, certainly a doable project and we hope to develop it further. Thank you. I'm David Michaels, Schuler School of Law.